Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to review some paints that I have been asked a lot about. And um, so when I was sick a couple weeks ago on my birthday and I was shopping around online, I decided to look and see if I could find a decent deal on these paints. And these are the Daniel Smith paints. And um, they are a pretty well-renowned company. People have wonderful things to say about them. They are um, kind of on the expensive side as far as artist watercolors go. They are an American company and um, I, I've honestly never read anything negative about them. So I decided I would um, try to find a good assortment of colors to review and I found this little set and um, the thing I like about it is it's a split primary set. You get a warm and a cool version of each color. You have um, Hansa Yellow Light, New Gamboge, Quinacridone Rose, Pyroil Scarlet, Thalo Blue Green Shade, and French Ultramarine, which is a more purple-based blue. So I'm like, this is perfect. And looking around at different sites, this set goes for up to $65 for these tiny little five milliliter tubes. Um, and I really wanted to try it for less, and I found on Amazon they had it for $22 as a warehouse deal. Um, and they basically say your package could be damaged. Um, it was like a return or something, but you know, you can get a good deal that way so I jumped on it they only had one and I got my order and I actually had two ultramarine blues um, all the other colors were fine but I didn't have a thalo blue so with an Amazon deal I actually looked um, on my order to contact the seller but you can't contact the Amazon warehouse department it's kind of like you can return it but that's it and I didn't want to return it because I already squirted it out a little bit on my plate and I didn't think that was fair to send it back and then if somebody else stuck with it so I contacted Daniel Smith and um, they shipped out the missing tube straight away and they also sent me a dot card which basically is a piece of unsized watercolor paper with um, little samples of their paints on there and I think these generally sell for like six bucks so you can kind of try out a bunch of colors before you decide what to invest in because the tubes are pricey um, and this will be kind of fun to play with I haven't used any of these yet I think I'll probably just cut up a bunch of bookmarks out of watercolor paper and then try some of these colors and then maybe stamp on them just so it's at least something practical and I'm not wasting um, wasting it just by swatching it out so um, if you are on the fence and you want to try out their colors you can or Order the dot cards and um, and again I would chop around a bit because they're on sale some places um, so this is what I got in the set again two of each of the primary colors and I thought since it's only six colors it wouldn't be too difficult to do a, um, a color mixing chart so to make a color mixing chart what you do and just disregard this column and this on the bottom right now so for six colors you would make a chart you make a, a graph basically of six cubes across by six cubes down and then you leave a little room on the outside so that you can um, write down what color you're using because that's pretty important and I recommend this if you're making like a little travel sized set maybe in like an Altoids tin or something to take with you that way you can see all the combinations you can make from those colors so um, what I did was I took all the colors and listed them out on both edges of the um, of the chart so we've got Hansa Yellow Light which is kind of like a nice clear bright lemon or Cad Yellow Light very similar to those colors New Gamboge, which is a nice warm yellow, kind of red leaning. Pyro Scarlet, which is almost like a vermilion. It's a it's a very warm orangey red. Quinacridone Rose, which is a um, a blue based red. It's kind of like a um, uh, it's a it's a very pink pink red magenta kind of color. French Ultramarine, which is a very um, a very purpley blue and thalo blue which is a very green blue now um all of the colors in this tryout um kind of basic set are single pigment with the exception of new gamboge this is um this uses pigment yellow 97 and pigment yellow 110 but still i found it to be a very clean mixing color there are a lot of mixes in the daniel smith line there's 200 and how many? 200 and something colors. There's quite a few. Um, and there, some are available in 5 milliliters. That's the size I have here. Mo all, the, all of them are available in 15 milliliters, which is uh, three times that size, obviously. And then they also have many of these available in a watercolor stick. And the watercolor stick, which I didn't really, and I, I was surprised, has three full pans of watercolor in there and it says there's no fillers or clay or wax so it's actually like getting almost like you're holding a pan of color and I didn't realize that because these were kind of expensive but when I compare them to like a pan of watercolor they're not that bad so I may be grabbing some of those ordering some of those if I find a good deal because I like to work from pans quite frankly um, I, I like tubes I just squirt them out let them dry and work that way so with my colors here and I painted these, I put these on my plate and I let them dry and then I, I worked on them. This is just a Dollar Tree plate, nothing fancy. Um, I was able to swatch these out. So what you do is you take your color from your column here, you paint, 
you're going to paint these all the way across. So in the first column, Hansa Yellow Light and Hansa Yellow Light, of course, make Hansa Yellow Light. Then here we have Hansa Yellow Light plus New Gamboge. Um, and I think I forgot to add the new Gamboge here because it does not look like I did, but there, look at that right there. Let's do that right here. Well, I'll show you <laughs> teachable moment, folks. Okay, so what you do is you take your Hansa Yellow Light, you take your new Gamboge, mix them together, and that's what you would paint right there, except I want a little more new Gamboge because obviously I had too much of the Hansa Yellow Light. So you would, and then here I do the Hansa Yellow Light plus Pyro Scarlet, which gives us that lovely um, kind of peachy orange. Then Hansa Yellow Light plus Quinacridone Rose, which gives us a nice blush color. Then we've got Hansa Yellow Light plus Ultramarine, which gives us a, a cool green. And then Hansa Yellow Light plus Thalo, um, or gray, more gray green. Then we get the Hansa Yellow Light plus Thalo Blue, which gives us more of an, like a, um, like a teal, a teal color. Um, so then you do that for all your colors and you can find some really beautiful combinations like the new Gamboge plus, um, plus the yellow blue. It just is a beautiful, almost like sappy green. I love, uh, something I thought was really interesting. The French ultramarine, which I'm now I'm glad I have two because of that mistake. I have two tubes of it. Um, I love the granulation. Uh, ultramarine blue is a granulating color from whatever brand, unless it's like made with a synthetic dye. Uh, and it just you have some gorgeous texture in here. And somebody had just asked on a watercolor for, forum that uh, I'm a part of what's the big deal about granulation? Why are people crazy about it? And I think what it is when you're doing watercolor, you notice the subtle differences between pigments and um, when you're working on like a flat piece of paper with fairly transparent sheer paints, to have something to add texture is really nice. So um, these granulating pigments are great for doing sand and rocks and um, anything where you'd want that extra kind of grainy texture. So that's why granulation I think is a big deal in watercolors. And Daniel Smith does carry a lot more granulating colors than other um, than other brands, especially with their mineral colors. The Primatech line is all mineral based, um, so the colors are the, you know they come from rocks and they have a very a very nice granulation. I haven't used any of those, but I can see some of those hopping into my cart pretty soon, especially serpentine, which looks like. It would just be beautiful, but I mean, look at that cobalt green pale. You can just see how much it granulates there. Uh, I'm definitely keeping this this pamphlet just so I can look at it when I'm considering um, purchases. And they do have a lot of mixes that are granulating. I don't know if I would go for many of the mixes just because it tells you what pigments are in there. And I, I honestly, I'd try it myself first with what I had before I um, before I bought a mix. But um, so I thought this gave me a really beautiful set of colors. And so then. I decided, because these will only give you two mixed colors, so these are only, you know, one plus one. So this is like Hansi Yellow Light plus Quinacridone Rose, French Ultramarine plus Quinacridone Rose. You know, it's just one plus one colors. So then I thought, well, I would want to try some more complex mixes. So here, I want to see if I can make indigo. So I used um, Thalo Blue and Ultramarine Blue, and then I added some Pyrrole Scarlet to it, and I got a beautiful indigo. See that? Now here, I wanted kind of like a more of a sap green, so I did Hansa Yellow plus Thalo blue plus a little gamboge new gamboge and I got this beautiful warm green and then I wanted to get like a burnt sienna color so I did pyro scarlet plus thalo blue plus new gamboge and I got kind of like this hot chocolate brown I'd kind of go back to the drawing board on my browns a little bit um, because it's not as rich as I would like and I know I could get a richer color just by using like if I did that indigo color but a little bit more pyro scarlet I think I would have gotten a richer brown less water um, so here ultramarine brew pyro Ultramarine Blue, Pyrrole Scarlet, and New Gamboge, um, which is, uh, yeah, the, got both blues and a little New Gamboge. I'm sorry. No, I don't. I have Ultramarine Blue plus, um, plus the red, plus the New Gamboge, and I got a, a granulating, pretty warm, um, warm gray, and then Thalo Blue plus Pyrrole Scarlet, watered down. I got this beautiful, almost like Davies gray color. Um, and then, you know, I mixed this green and I mixed another violet and um, kind of this peachy color or sandy color. So I was basically just playing with what I had. And here I just rainbowed it out just to see what the colors did when I spectrum them. And they're just so vivid. And isn't that the yummiest color? It's just scrumptious. I love it. So, um, so those are the colors I got from those six. And of course you can keep mixing and get infinite colors when you mix three, four pigments together. Um, and generally when you mix more pigments together, you're gonna get a duller intensity of color. It's gonna cut down the intensity. Um, but I didn't see really, like I purposely made mud here because I wanted some grays and browns, but um, I think we can really fine tune it and get some beautiful colors. I mean, if you just even look at just little portions of 
areas here you're going to see some interesting colors happening so i did decide to do some little paintings but none of them really came out well i was doing this little flower from my sister's garden she said it was a uh, columbine um, had a lot of little petals in the middle, almost like a dahlia, but I was just playing with the colors there. And um, then I just kind of did some abstraction here. I started with the center of that flower and it wasn't going well, so I just ended up doing out, dragging out some water, then dropping in the pigments just to see how they behave together. Um, and I just think it was beautiful. And this was just cleaning up my palette, even just cleaning up the mud on my palette. I found that I got some really beautiful just colors here. I might make that into a bookmark. Um, so let's, we could do a little mixing here. I got a postcard. I don't really know what I want. Maybe we'll paint some Chinese lanterns or something. I really, well, I'm trying to think, what can I just paint off the top of my head? <laughs> I think we could do Chinese lanterns. Maybe I'll sketch a few on, uh, just kind of get like almost like heart shapes without the, um, without too much of an indent on the top or rounded, um, or just kind of like rounded, triangles okay so we've got that'll be our um that'll be our shape okay <laughs> i'm gonna zoom in a little bit let's get my palette in in frame a little bit more there we go okay um so what i'm gonna do here i think first is i will wet the shape there and i think i'll throw in some of the um new gimboge and you can see re-wetting it nice and bright coming right off the plate where it's dry now I'm going to grab a little bit of the um, pyrrole scarlet dirty brush I'm picking it right up on that on that brush nice clean mixes I want a little more color they have a lot of water in there Now, if I wanted to do a shadow on the edge, I could do two things. I could grab a green that I've mixed already, or I could grab a little of the ultramarine blue. Uh, I'm just going to tap my brush off on a towel because I have too much water in there. You see how that grays it out? color theory guys remember I had recommended there was some I do have a, a video on just basic color mixing color theory on a split primary palette that you can check out I will link it in a um, in a info card but if you do want more information there's a great class on craftsy that actually uses the Daniel Smith colors in this fashion those six colors they might have a different one of the yellows might be different but um, but yeah it's the same idea if you want to have a little bit more information on that now I want to use my credit card scraper and just scrape in some um some details however it is looting me right now oh i'm so prepared let me just use the back end of a brush or something let me just pause and find my credit card scraper good grief first thing in the morning i'm so unprepared i'm just going to scrape in the little channels here you can get more detailed you could do like some of the other little because it's almost like these little cellular walls that you see on chinese lanterns and you can already start to see where the ultramarine blue is. You can kind of start to see the colors sinking and separating and you're getting that beautiful granulation, um, which is really, really nice. And we'll do the, now let's try painting on dry. So I'll grab some of the new gimboge again. So I'm using pretty juicy paint on the dry, the dry paper. This is just a Strathmore watercolor postcard. The nice thing about this plate um, is that you can put your paint up on the ridge, up on the ridge of it, and then you can um, you can let the washes kind of flow down and mix in the center. I, it's still not as much space as you have like in a regular watercolor, big watercolor studio palette, um, but it's not bad, especially when I you know because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put these paints. A little bit of ultramarine blue, and I like to let my um, let my paints dry before I use them that way I can kind of go in them with a dirty brush and not have to worry about contamination so much now if you just have the red and the blue without any yellow in it you get more of a purple I kind of like having different shades happening and I always like my credit card scraper better than the back end bevel of a brush if it's an aquarelle brush just because I feel like I get a little bit more um, a little bit more interesting color so here when I used it on dry paper because it's a small area they still blend it together really well and the colors are going to be more intense because there's less water so you'll have less shift I did notice shift um, between wet and dry but that's just because 
um, I was painting these things very wet. So of course they appear a little bit lighter when they're dry. So, but I mean, you can see the colors are plenty intense. It's not, it's just, that's something with pretty much any watercolor, you're going to notice that it's going to look darker, wetter when it's wet and lighter when it's dry and the gloss goes down. And a little bit more of that. And I'm trying to remember what a leaf looks like on these, on these plants. So we're going to have to fudge it a little bit because I don't remember hundred <laughs> percent. Grab a little bit of this. And at least I want to get the review out of the way first in case, um, in case you weren't interested in seeing the demo. All right. And again, we will do the scraping kind of like a pumpkin that the shape that we're scraping in there. All right. So I'm just going to freehand in a little uh, stem. So for my yellow, what do I want to do? Let's do, um, let's make one of these triple mix colors. Okay. I really like the, um, Hansa, which is this yellow here plus thalo, which is right there, plus um, pyrrole scarlet, which is what we just used. That See how that kind of negates that brightness? It cuts it down, makes it a little more olive. All right, I'm using a Mimic brush, which is a synthetic squirrel, so it's very absorbent. And I am going to, oh, I see a drop of color, so I'm just going to paint right through that so I get some interesting, interesting effects. Let's give these guys some stems. But unfortunately, that, that wasn't wet enough to really do much interesting. Though pull off a couple little branches. Maybe grab a juicier brush for some leaves. Let's do this one. Let's uh, load right up with um, gamboge. And I'm just going to drag, I'm just drag, loading up with the gimbos, dragging it into the green mix I have down there. And I'm just going to throw in some juicy loose leaves. And then I will grab some deeper green. Again, they, I'm taking the phthalo, going to grab some of the hand salt light. And I'm only contaminating that top film. So that's kind of why I like to let it dry because I just go over that with a wet brush and I can clean it. Just drip that in. Let it do its thing. Grab a little bit of the scarlet there. Dull it down a little bit because it is kind of bright. Work on the stem a little bit there. Oh, maybe just do a little little leaf. This is just a, off the top of my head, abstract little, uh, little painting. So nothing, nothing we have to worry about. And then I think I will do a little splattering because I like to splatter. You can already see just how the colors are kind of mingling and separating. Um, I like this granulating effect and I could definitely see grabbing a few more colors from the, um, from the line because of this. Now the only color I didn't use in this from the kit was the quinacridone rose. But that's all right. You don't have to use all your colors in every painting. Grab a little of this ultramarine blue. And you can always blot if you get somewhere you don't like. I love what's happening there, so I'm not going to blot that off. But um, but there's a quick little uh, quick little demo for you, so you can kind of get an idea for these, get a feel for these paints. And if you can get a great deal on the little tryout set, I would recommend this. It's a great kit for a beginner, especially because you're getting all good colors. A lot of times you get a kit and you have white and black or colors that you wouldn't necessarily purchase or use. And it feels like a waste, but these are all good colors that, you know, even if you get these and you're not wowed, they're going to go in your regular workhorse colors there. You'll definitely use them up They're high quality and, um, and they will get used even if, you know, even if you decide not to switch to Daniel Smith or buy any other ones, you're not, you haven't wasted your money, which I like that. And of course, as a beginner, it's really good because you're not getting, um, you'll, you'll learn how to mix your colors and you can get great ranges from browns to purples to greens. And, um, I'll just show you those violets again, because I didn't mix out any violets, beautiful, beautiful ranges of, of every color. Um, they're nice and clean and pure and I highly recommend them. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, you can pop them in there too. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Happy crafting.